Hey guys, welcome to this um, first episode of Unity Car Physics. And this is specifically going to be physics that are not using the wheel colliders because um, I've been trying to create uh, a car racing type game, arcade style racing game, uh, for a couple of years now. And every time I keep going back to those wheel colliders and they're just not satisfactory to use because a lot of the values, they're not explained well and they have no relation to one another. There's, there's things like the, the forward and the side um, uh, friction uh, are calculated separately so you could never really properly drift or you would just grip the entire time. And it's just not really fun to use. And if you if you look up online, like there's, there's a lot of people just saying don't use the wheel colliders, try and make something yourself. And I've been attempting to do that. Um, and I've been quite unsuccessful. <laughs> Like I've, I've used things like the, the alternate physics model that Unity made and I've tried following people's tutorials on it which were generally not really for uh, creating your own physics, they were just like the wheel colliders but how could you use them properly and stuff. But I never really got anywhere with something that I personally like because obviously the, the way a car handles in an arcade game might feel different for everyone like you might like how payback need for speed payback uh, plays while others would personally like burnout three more or anything like that um so i was just looking for something and then i found a youtube channel that um is in russian but uh yeah so i can't pronounce their name <laughs> unfortunately but uh yeah they made a car physics tutorial for unreal engine and what I wanted to do was challenge myself to see if I could translate the pl blueprints setup that I used into actual code. And then from there, I actually asked for his permission, obviously, uh, from there, teach you guys how to do it in Unity, uh, in English as well. I, I don't have anything against Russian, but I honestly, I do not understand the long language, unfortunately. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I had to sometimes ask him about certain things like uh, what did you mean by this or what did you mean by that and unfortunately the, the, the YouTube uh, uh, subtitle system that automatically translates and stuff, it, it isn't perfect so there was a lot of uh, interpretive uh, work there but um, yeah, I, I hope to uh, uh, allow you guys through this tutorial create a, um, a fun arcade car system that, um, that you actually understand why things work because a lot of tutorials only show you how to do it but they don't really explain why you should do it that way and I'm going to attempt to explain things uh, through images, uh, through um, explaining why uh, certain things work the way they do and I might fail I, I'm definitely not perfect in that sense because uh, I'm, I'm still trying the, the whole teacher uh, thing but uh, yeah j let, let me know if you if you are stuck at something if you, if you don't understand something or if you think I could have explained it better or maybe if you even know stuff like this that that you could actually tell me how I could have done it better which is uh, which is also fine um, but yeah, let's get to the media things because I don't want to, uh, to just sit here and, <laughs> and keep explaining things without showing you. So as you can see, I have a Supra model here, which is one I downloaded from the internet. Um, I will provide a link in the description below uh, where you can download it. And I just gave it some color, um, just made sure that uh, it um, sits well in the scene. And as you can see, I have a script wheel attached to it. And in this, uh, in this tutorial, I will explain every single thing from that script. And if I press play, we have a floating car, as you can see. And the floating car is basically, in this case, uh, the suspension. Because in racing games that are arcade, generally, or pretty much always, they use ray cask suspension, as that is called. And it's basically just a line that goes from a certain origin downwards to check where the ground is. And then from there, they, cal they calculate uh, the force that is necessary to lift the car off the ground. And that is something that I will teach you today so that you will actually be able to do this on your own. 
So if you wanted to make a um, futuristic uh, racing game where the uh, cars or, well, ships or whatever are hovering, you could actually use stuff like this as well. Uh, this, this is just something for us that is, is uh, in this case, applied to a car. But you could use it for this. You could use it uh, to check whether uh, a helicopter is on the ground or you could check if uh, if a boat is actually in the sea and stuff. There, there's a lot of ways to use Raycasts. Um, they're very powerful tools. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of negativity sometimes surrounds them because uh, with cars, of course, it's just one line that shoots down. So there are uh, little bugs like the wheels, the visual wheels. Once we add them, uh, going through uh, curbs and stuff like that. So it's it's not perfect, definitely not. But it it is something that um, I think you will uh, appreciate how much. Uh, how easy it is to set it up and, and how easy it is to understand how it works. So from here, let's jump into the video. All right, so we're inside a new project in Unity, which I hope that you know how to create because otherwise um, this might not be the best tutorial to start with. But um, yeah, we'll just start with a little scene setup so that we have everything clear uh, and um, easy, uh, easily act, uh, accessible for us. Well, my talking is amazing sometimes. I always put the directional light out of frame because it annoys me if it's constantly in the middle. And I also just make a world object to which the directional light will be linked. And in that, I will also create a floor which in this case can be 2000 by 2000 and 0 0.2, something like that. We'll just call it floor as well. And um, obviously it's going to be very annoying to look at when it's all white. So we need to import a texture. So let's create a textures folder and Obviously you can do it via import new asset and then go to the place that you want to go. So in this case, the asphalt texture, but you can also drag it from a Windows Explorer uh, screen. So just go to uh, your Windows Explorer, then pictures or wherever it's located on your computer. And then obviously you can just drag and drop it in there. That's uh, the same idea basically. Um, anyways, we've got the texture. Now we need to create a material as well, which of course is all uh, very, that actually annoys me. There we go. Materials um, is all pretty standard knowledge of Unity. So I'm not really explaining anything in depth. I'm just going over it quite fast. We need to tile this, otherwise it won't properly um, show on the on the floor that we created because otherwise you get this kind of effect where <laughs> it's just one huge stretch texture that's why we need a seamless texture and asphalt is not really reflective unless it's wet so let's just set it to 0 0.1 all right let's save and um, move the camera closer a little bit just a little bit it's not really that important for now because we're not really going to work with it but it's also annoying if it's too far away now the most important part of the actual visual aspect is importing the model, which in this case I have in here as well. So just put it there. Oh, gotta love Windows when it does that automatically. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we have the model here. Let's just throw it in there. It's at the zero axis, so that's great. Don't need to reset anything. Now, I don't want the model itself to be the top parent of the, the uh, object that we're going to create, basically. So I am going to also create an empty and just reset that to zero as well. And then just put the Toyota Supra model in there and call the Supra as well, because why not? And put it up like one, because obviously it needs to be above ground, because otherwise it's going to just fall through the ground. Um, this model, obviously, um, uh, it isn't mine. I, uh, I downloaded it from a website, which will be in the description. And uh, I will also add this specific FBX file, um, which is just uh, something that I personally edited. Like I removed the wheels because it's going to be visual for now with how the suspension works. 
um, I uh, made sure the scale was actually correct to how it would look in Unity because if you imported the one that you downloaded it was like 100 times too big which also isn't really nice to work with if you have to uh, constantly adjust uh, the scaling um, so I just made sure that everything was uh, set up correctly for Unity so you can download that if you want and then uh, or use your own model which is fine as well just make sure that um, inside the, the Supra main game object, so the empty game object that we made, the Supra itself, the model is a 0, 0, 0. And that uh, this one is a 0, 0 and then 1 or something, whichever is necessary to get the Supra off the ground. Um, let's also make sure that it is nice to look at, because right now it's really boring. So let's make a bar paint, and just make it fully reflective and a little bit of metallicness to it, a little point four. Um, let's add a dark red color, why not? It's nice, okay. Create another material, uh, matte, matte black, haha, <laughs> there we go. I like naming things, as you can tell, uh, and this one needs to be almost not uh, reflective. It is very interesting to look into um, color theory and uh, materials inside Unity and stuff like that because in the world um, everything basically has some form of reflection, like a little bit. Like that's not the point of the, the tutorial, but it is interesting to think about that everything has a little bit of re reflectivity. So never set the smoothness to zero. Like you can make it really small, but always give it like at least some so that it reacts to the environment around it. Um, lastly, a glass material, uh, max windows, set it to fade, gray, fully reflective, and turn down the alpha a little bit, and put it on this one, there we go, and maybe not gray, but a little bit blue, a little darker maybe. I don't know, like it's just for for um, shits and giggles basically, it's just to make the model look at least a little bit appealing. Uh, there. there we go, save it. Alright, now we're going to actually look into what um, the entire purpose of this tutorial is. Um, so right now this Supra doesn't do anything. So the one of the most important things is obviously adding a rigid body to it. And a rigid body is going to make sure that this object is going to behave according to physics within the uh, within the Unity engine. So if we give this a mass, well in this case one, is going to fall down as soon as we uh, hit play because it has a uh, gravity, uh, gravity ticked. And we also want to make sure that there is actually something to collide with. So let's call this um, colliders and just add a box collider to that. I generally like to do it like this so just get the flat image instead of a 3D image. Move it up a bit uh, 0.8. This looks good. It's not going to be precise so in this case uh, the, the position of it doesn't really matter it's just for demonstrational purposes. I'll uh, explain in a later episode the, the way we can actually import a um, collider that is closer to the shape of the car so you get more accurate um, collisions. Like it's not going to be like pixel perfect but it's going to be a lot better than just a box. Make it 1.3 I think that should be good. Uh, 1. Oh, I already said it's a 1.4. Wow, 1.5? <laughs> there we go, I think that's good. Okay. So I'm going to show you a um, reference file now that I made myself. There we go. Uh, can we zoom in just a little bit? There we go. Okay, so what we want to do is create um, an origin. Basically, so from that point on the car, we want to send a ray cast down to the ground to check the distance that we are from the, gar uh, from the ground. Uh, we can uh, calculate the velocity of the uh, of the springs with that after uh, after a little bit I'll explain that later as well 
Um, but basically we want to have uh, an empty game object that is representative of the uh, rave cast origin, so where we want to shoot a rave cast down, which is basically the center of the wheel, which is why I added a line here with wheel radius as well. Because we want to get the full length of the spring plus the wheel radius to check the raycast length. So the raycast itself is going to shoot down based on the length of the entire spring, and I'll, I'll explain the max length in just a little bit, but based on the max length of the entire spring plus the wheel radius, because the wheel radius um, is going to be constant. The max length itself, the, the spring length basically, that can differ. So that is something that we'll look into a little bit. The max length is rest length, so basically the, the point at which the spring is not compressed plus spring travel, and the spring travel itself will be um, something that we can control how much the wheel can move up and down. So if the spring travel is really low, then the wheel won't be able to move up and down a lot. If the spring travel is high, then of course the wheel will probably go through the body and everything because the wheel itself is going to be just visual so it has no collisions or whatever. So in this case these two values are quite important to get right for your car. Um, based on this raycast uh, we want to check what the actual length of the spring is and there's a very handy tool within raycast itself uh, that helps us with that. Um, so basically if we make sure that uh, we get a raycast hit, so uh, it registers that it hits something, uh, we can check the distance uh, via a variable because a Unity keeps track of that uh, itself, so we don't need to actually calculate anything for that, which is really nice. Uh, but basically it's going to be the distance between the raycast origin, as it says here, and the wheel hit, so the, the wheel hit on the ground minus the wheel radius and the reason for that is because only the spring needs compression the wheel stays static the the wheel radius itself won't change obviously in a real car this is not entirely true as depending on the load of the wheel the wheel radius might change because of the air that is inside the wheel but in this case for arcade purposes uh, having the wheel radius um, static is the best option because otherwise it adds uh, a lot of unnecessary complexity especially since you don't really notice stuff like that in uh, in a racing game unless you make like full simulation but that's not the point here so um, if the raycast hit returns true so if we are actually on the ground we get the length of the spring which is the distance between the raycast origin and the wheel hit, so the distance itself, which like I said is a variable within uh, within Unity, so we don't need to worry about that, minus wheel radius, so that's also something we know, so we don't need to worry about that either, and otherwise the length of the spring is max length, and the reason for that again is because wheel radius is already calculated inside this raycast, um, raycast calculation, so we need don't need to add it just to get the full spring length because obviously the wheel radius is not part of the spring so in this case it's just the max length so um yeah let's set that up let me just get that get the other picture ready for a little bit of explanation later and do, 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 do. there 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 and there. All right, nice. Nope. Then, um, no, actually, we don't need to be here just yet. Uh, my excuse. Um, so what we need to do is add the four points on the car that are going to be representative of the origin of the raycast for the uh, for the suspension. So one right here, one right there, one right there, and one right there. So let's just start simple create an empty, it's going to be a zero, 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 and I generally like to go into the flat mode again, the 2D mode, and let's move it up, and oh, there we go. This is um, currently just guessing. 
if you have the wheels it's easier because then you can just use the transform of the wheel itself and then create a game object from that and then just move that up but right now it's uh it's just looking at it um doing it manually but that's okay and put it there and this is the wheel front left now luckily if we copy this we can make this wheel front right and just delete the minus here so it's right there and then we can duplicate these both again get the wheel RL for rear left and wheel RR for rear right and go in flat mode again select both and move it back to about the halfway point seems about right I like to keep these um, the same height so that um, the suspension itself also has the same values on, on all the wheels obviously if you have a car that is like slanted forward you might have a different um, different experience where you have to move this one up or that one down uh, but in that case you obviously you can uh, create a longer suspension for whichever side you want so for instance the rear get longer suspension for that all right so the setup is now completely done we have a car in 3d get into 3d mode again a car in 3d that has a rigid body on it uh, let's give it a mass i know by head that the supra is roughly 14 10 kilograms so let me just enter that but you can just enter any number for any car that you want uh, you can look online the the curb weight for a car it's quite easy to find but anyways we have the uh, supra body in this case uh, or object i should say with a rigid body we have the model itself in there we have a collider to make sure that it doesn't fall through the ground which you can test instantly as well there we go it lands on the ground just fine and then we have the four wheels so let's create a new folder and call it scripts and in this script we have or in this folder we have to create a very important script namely the script wheel so we open that already and I also want to also add it instantly to this to make it easier there we go references there we go okay so what we need to do here is uh, in this let me just first fix this because I really find it annoying that I have to keep doing this <laughs> in this uh, script we have to define a few uh, variables and I want to start with a private rigid body RB which we can instantly set as well and the reason we do this is because if you want to do anything force related so and anything uh, physics related you need to access the rigid body component and if you would call this inside the update or inside the fix update method um, it actually creates a lot of a uh, lot of memory uh, blockage because it has to keep calling it basically well in this case we just store it once and then we can access it every time because it knows exactly where to go Let's just set this to fixed update already because we know we need to work with physics so physics always happen within the fixed update method and from there we can actually start with creating the variables that we need so i like to group them together by uh, type in this case suspension and well i can't type um wheel public float we know the rest length is important oh shit here we go public floats spring travel we know we need a private float max length and i can also already tell you that we need a private float min length because we're going to use the min length and the max length to also clamp the spring length so the spring is going to have a certain length based on the hit distance um, and we don't want to like get it past the spring travel so we need to uh, we need to uh, clamp it basically 
Uh, so we know we need that. We also know we need a spring. Oh, float spring length. And lastly, we need a public float wheel radius. Right, well, that doesn't really do much in terms of the actual physics, but it does help us set up the actual raycast. So let's start that raycast out right away. If physics dot raycast and where is the origin of the ray well we already know that it's going to be at the transformed up position of this object because we know that the objects that we created was the origin for the uh, for the uh, suspension so we say transform dot position we know that it has to go down the the wheel obviously doesn't go up it's uh, it's something that is uh, a down force that we apply an upward force uh, afterwards so we need to check uh, down sorry up minus transform dot up is obviously down <laughs> then we need to make sure that it actually uh, registers so we say raycast hit hit and lastly we need the length so the length of the ray and like we said earlier in the drawing let me get it once more The raycast full length is the max length plus the wheel radius. So max length plus wheel radius. And then we open bracket and close bracket. Now, how do we determine the max length and the min length as well? Because those are both important. It is really, really simple. The min length is the rest length minus the spring travel. The max length is the rest length plus the spring travel. It really is that simple because all we need to know for sure is how far the, the spring can actually travel, which is something that we'll set later in the inspector. So if the rest length is 0.5, for instance, and we know the spring travel is 0.2, then the min length is 0.3. And for the max length, it's 0.7. So hopefully that is very clear. Um, right now we don't have any physics code. We only have the spring length, uh, but we do know that the spring length equals the hit dot distance. Like I said, the the oh sorry, we need an actual another bracket here. My bad. Uh, the hit dot distance is something that Unity keeps track of keeps track of itself uh, in their raycast hit. Uh, uh, structure. Uh, so we know the hit dot distance minus the wheel radius. That is the spring length. So we know a little bit right now. At the moment nothing will happen if we click play. Well obviously nothing is going to happen because we haven't set anything yet but even if we set anything here nothing will change. Currently let's just set this to, for instance, 0 0.33. That's a pretty decent value. There are real world, va real world values for this, but for this demonstration, I will just keep it uh, on something that I'm familiar with. Uh, so let's set this to 0 0.5 for now and 0 0.2. But even like I said, even if we do that, nothing will happen because we have no forces applied to this. So that brings us to number two in our references. What actually happens when the wheel, or sorry, the spring gets compressed? Obviously, the wheel radius itself, uh, let me zoom in a little bit, the wheel radius itself stays the same. Nothing changes in that regard because we already established that that is a static value. And like we said here, the spring length is the hit dot distance minus the wheel radius. However, what we do need is a spring force and the spring force is actually what is going to push the car up it's going to be the force that allows the car to be pushed off the ground it's basically going to be a constant struggle between the gravity pushing the car down and our spring pushing it back up with its spring force and the way we calculate that is a stiffness value which is a constant which is something we will actually edit in the inspector 
times, and in this case, it's the rest length minus the spring length. And the reason for this is because the rest length minus the spring length actually uh, creates um, uh, the, the difference basically in what the spring can be and what the spring has to be basically because spring length uh, is the value hit dot distance minus wheel radius so we know that that will basically always be smaller than rest length so we need to make sure that the, the rest length uh, minus the spring length get uh, multiplied by the stiffness which then in turn creates a force large enough if the stiffness value is high enough obviously but creates a force high enough that pushes the car off the ground now this this itself won't fix it like this this, this itself is not the suspension itself uh, right away however it is the first step to get there so let's create another private private float spring force and I also want to create a private factor free suspension force because the suspension force is actually going to be what will push the car up later with the damping because damping will be something that I'll touch on in a bit as well as that is a very important feature which I'll show you why as well um, plus we know, know that we need another value called spring stiffness so in this case, spring force equals spring stiffness times rest length. So the like I said, the, the length at which the spring is at rest, at max rest basically, minus the spring length, which is the hit dot distance minus the wheel radius. Alright, so now we have a force. If we add a value to spring stiffness and we allow it to calculate through here, this will actually generate a force, which then we can put into suspension force equals spring force times transform dot up. Because it needs to be the opposite direction of the raycast, because the raycast we already established goes down. And the force needs to be applied upwards because, of course, the car needs to be pushed off the ground. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's go back to Unity. Let's recalculate the thing. There we go. Let's just put this at um, 30,000 first. Let's see if that works. And let's see if this actually already works the way I want it to. Of course it doesn't because <laughs> I forgot to add a line. That's, that's something that always happens. Obviously, we need to add the force because otherwise the suspension force is just going to be a value. So that's my bad. Um, add force, suspension force. There we go. But, but, and that is very important, if we do this, we don't really tell Unity where to apply it. So how else would we do it then? Because if we do this, it will apply the force at the center of gravity of the the uh, rigid body so of this model basically so if this model would drop right now it would just have a, a force applied to its center of gravity so roughly where the the axis thingy is and it will push it off the ground for sure but it won't be from where the actual wheels are which is what we want so in that case what we can do is set it to at position Add force at the set position and now we need to tell it where and we know that as well because unity again actually keeps track of that in the hit uh, component hit dot point so we want to apply a force at position suspension force at the hit dot point so from here come on unity always hate it when it does that um, okay. So from here, there's a raycast downwards. If it detects the ground, it's going to be like, okay, I need to add a certain amount of force to this. And let's see what happens. Okay, I guess it's not long enough. Let's see if we can make it a little bit longer. Hmm. It should... Wait a minute, I'm getting an error. Ah, 
Ah, okay. Important. <laughs> this is very important, guys. This is uh, a, a thing that I keep uh, keep bumping into myself. Obviously, it needs to get it from the supra body, and usually, if you add a script to here, you can just get component rigid body because it's on the same object. But since we are trying to access the rigid body on the wheel itself, it's it doesn't have that um, it doesn't have that rigid body. Uh, so we need to access it from the root because this is the root, and then these are the members basically. So we just say transform .root .get components rigid body just to make sure that we can actually apply the force because otherwise we just are stuck to the ground again. <laughs> so again, that was my bad. Uh, learn from my mistakes. I make them all the time as well. I'm not perfect. <laughs> all right. And there we go. We have spring physics, but it's really bouncy. But these, this is what physics, or sorry, this is what a spring is. It's just, if it's never uh, stopped by anything, it would just keep going constantly. Now, obviously in a car, it doesn't do that because it's uh, actually a damped spring, which is really nice because otherwise your car would be this bouncy the entire time. It's actually really fun to just keep watching it. You need to remove the, the option to allow you to follow things in the scene view. I don't know why. Also, that was me. That wasn't the suspension. I actually moved the car there. <laughs> My bad. Uh, anyway, so as you can see, the, the uh, suspension itself, it works right now. It doesn't do exactly what we want it to because there's a very important component called damping that we want to apply to this, but it does work. You can see that the car is being lifted off the ground. Now, in order for us to add damping to this, we need to actually add more lines to it. So let me just grab my other, there it is, and zoom out. And there we go. This is the damper force um, calculation. And as you can see, we have only two values here. We have the stiffness, which is in this case damper stiffness. Um, and uh, it's another constant, so it's something that we fill in in the inspector. And we multiply this times the spring velocity. And basically the spring velocity is going to be the difference between the last frame's spring length and the current frame's spring length. So that is something that we need to implement, and I'll show you that as well. And I hope you can follow along, because this is uh, a little bit more... Uh, more difficult and less straightforward than this was. Um, let's just move this up a little bit. So what we need to do is add two things. Private floats last length. And because I'm OCD as fuck, we just put it in there because that looks nicer with all the lengths. And we need a public float damper stiffness. And lastly, we need a private float damper force, private float spring velocity. And again, because I'm OCD as fuck, we put it in there with all the other springs. Now, to set the last length, so the last length is going to be the previous frame of the calculation. Uh, the, the the sorry the spring length on the previous length of the uh, sorry the previous frame of calculation so I'll just show you because that's easier than explaining last length is spring length basically so this is literally all we have to do to set the last length to the spring length and then we adjust the spring length so that is this one and now we can actually make sure that we get our spring velocity and again i am very particular about this i hope you don't mind the spring velocity is the last length minus the spring length sorry not, not spring velocity spring length And then what we want to do is make sure that it's measured over time. So this, um, this uh, specific uh, value 
is the the delta time of the um, of the uh, physics calculation. So every time that uh, we do this specific calculation, the time obviously has changed, and the time will actually make sure that we keep track of uh, the these two values minus each other. Uh, over time because that is something that we want. We want the velocity and velocity is distance over time which is one of the most basic Newtonian um, rules if I remember correctly. Um, so that is the spring velocity and then we get to the damper force which was really simple uh, damper stiffness times spring velocity. And then what I want to do last which is something I talked about already, is make sure that the spring length is clamped to the min length and the max length. That way we can't move up more than the spring travel. Or, well, move up and down more than the spring travel. So that's that. And then lastly, obviously, we need to apply that. So, oh, not that one. Gotta love it when it keeps suggesting the wrong word. Spring force plus damper force times transform that up. And now we need to wait until it updates again. Let's set this to roughly 4000. And I, I know these values by head, it's just something that I played with, so you can set this to anything at all. Just make sure that the spring stiffness is high enough to actually carry the car because if we set this to 5000 it's not let's just remove the damper for now it's not going to actually lift up the car see it's just going to be on the ground so if we set it to maybe 10000 still not enough if we set it to 15000 still not enough 25000 oh then we suddenly have movement See, so you need to really play with this value and it will depend on how heavy your car is. If you have a heavier car, the stiffness of the spring needs to be higher. All right, so let's set this back to 30,000 because we knew that worked well and set this to 4,000 and then click play. And there we go. The car is perfectly steady. I mean, obviously it's moving right now and that's because we're basically on ice. So the car has no friction whatsoever, but this movement is on the X and Z axis. It's not actually on the Y axis. And the Y axis is the only thing we currently have forces applied to. So what we could do is just move it a little bit closer to the ground. 0 0.5, no, 3, 2, maybe 3. Is that going to be enough? Yeah, there we go. So as you can see right now, it has um, really short suspension. So what we could do is give it really long suspension. You just see it bump up into the air. <laughs> there we go. Or maybe two. There we go. Now it's a monster truck. And now we need to damp it more, apparently. So let's set the damping to 6,000. Or maybe edit the... Uh, Spring travel a bit more. Could be that it's just too high, that it's too high off the ground, or that the spring stiffness is not good enough. Definitely is good. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, obviously, um, the spring length itself, it's not supposed to be that high, but it, sh it should be possible to set it that high. Let's see if we set this to 2, 1. Let's see if that works. I'm curious. Because the calculations for the actual physics, yeah, there we go. See, it works. Just the spring travel needed to be higher. But the actual calculations for this are um, actual physics calculations that they use in the real world as well. It's just the distance between two certain points get, gets calculated based on the original uh, length. Uh, things like the spring velocity, like I said, that gets uh, measured over time is something that happens in physics all the time. But as you can see, with quite a few lines so that this is what 10 lines it's from 34 to 46 this entire thing or 47 actually it's 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 13 lines and that actually holds up the car like actual physics and it works 
as you can see, it works with weird values as well. So let's just set this back to 0 0.5 and 0 0.2 and leave you with this, a perfectly floating car. And basically every arcade game, arcade racing game does it like this. And the reason for that is it's relatively cheap for the computer to calculate this and we can get a ton of information from this such as the velocity at the, the hit of the, of the, the ray cast so that we can calculate things like how much the, car, uh, the, the wheels are slipping based on the angle of the car and the angle of the wheels and that, that's all stuff that we'll get to in the future but for now um, the car is drifting off in space <laughs> But uh, yeah, for now, like I said, um, this this is it. That that's all it is. It's it's literally just seventeen lines of code uh, that actually does the physics calculation and then some setup. That's all it is. But uh, yeah, just keep in mind things that I mess up with, uh, like I said, uh, like the transform dot root in this case. I knew that I've done it before, but you know, it it slipped my mind. So just make sure to, to do that if your uh, your rigid body is not on the same object as you're applying the, the script to. And um, yeah, make sure that things like, uh, like this compared to this are actually in the right order because order matters. If we would put the last length here and then the spring length there, nothing would change because we're setting the spring length and then we're just setting last, last length to the spring length. If we set it above there, we are taking the spring length from the previous frame and then we're changing it. So that is really important to keep that um, order in mind because if you fuck up that order, it's not going to work. It, it is just not going to get the velocity because the spring length and the, and the last length are just going to be the same every time, which is not what we want because we want to know the difference between the frames. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. It is uh, not that long a tutorial, I, uh, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope that um, you're actually excited to, uh, to see the next episode. Make sure to subscribe if you, uh, if you are interested. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.